Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in this portion of the video, we are going to begin working on the buffer region, what is called the buffer region of a titration. And so we are still working on the same titration reaction that we have been in the previous videos. And so this is sodium acetate reacting with hydrochloric acid to form acetic acid and NaCl. And so in this titration, we have a burette, and that burette is containing HCl. And then we have a flask that contains our sodium acetate. Okay, and um, this portion of the video is focusing on the buffer region of the titration curve. Okay, so these types of questions, they look things like determine the pH of 10 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium acetate when one milliliter of 0.3 molar HCl has been added. So this problem is going to start off a lot like the previous problem whenever we were talking about the endpoint. The first step of this problem is to determine what is in solution. This step is stoichiometry. So we have our sodium acetate reacting with HCl, forming acetic acid and NaCl. And so what we need to know is what have we added to this reaction and what is left in our beaker at the end of the reaction. And so remember to do this, this is stoichiometry, which means that we need to use moles. And so if I find moles, that moles is equal to molarity times volume, I can find that initially we have 5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium acetate, and we have 3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of HCl. I don't care about the NaCl, and I have 0 moles of acetic acid. Now, s normally last semester we would have gone through figuring out which one is the limiting reagent and then how much is left over. Um, I'm going to do that with some mental math. The nice thing is is that these are these are these are in a one to one mole relationship, which means that the species with the least amount of material is going to get used up. And so that means that I'm going to use up all of my HCl. It is my limiting reactant, which means that I can create 3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of acetic acid, again, because this is in a 1 to 1 to 1 stoichiometry. And what is left over here is 4.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium acetate. Now, to get that, I subtracted the initial values because 3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of the acetate reacted and disappeared. And so what is in solution here? I have... I have acetic acid 
and acetate. So I have a weak acid and its conjugate base. This is the definition of a buffer. So a buffer is a mixture of weeks, a weak acid and its conjugate base. So now in step two, we are going to need to find the pH of the solution, of the resulting solution. So since I am working with weak acids and bases, I need to set up an equilibrium. And so I'm going to, I'm going to start with my acetate. It is an equilibrium with the acetic acid plus OH minus. And since I have weeks, and in equilibrium, I'm going to set up an ice table. And now ice tables rely upon molarity. And so remember that molarity is equal to moles divided by the liters. And in this example, my volume is my total volume, which is 10 milliliters of my sodium acetate plus one milliliter of HCl. And so my volume is 11 milliliters or 0 0.11 liters. So if I find that out, I find that initially I have 0 0.4273 molar acetate and I have 0 0.02727 molar acetic acid. I don't care about my water and I have no hydroxide. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to lose acetate. I'm going to create acetic acid and hydroxide. And so at equilibrium, I have 0 0.4273 minus X, 0 0.02727 plus X, and X. And so to find the pH, I'm going to have to find the concentration. So I need, I need the concentration of OH minus to be able to get to the pH. And so to do this, I'm going to set up that my KB is equal to X times 0 0.02727 plus X divided by 0.4273 minus x. My Kb in this case is equal to 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x times 0 0.02727 plus x over 0.4273 minus x. If I solve, I used Wolfram Alpha because this is complicated algebra. I get that x equals 8.712 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. And so my pOH is equal to, and this is equal to my OH minus concentration. So my pOH is equal to minus log of 8.712 times 10 to the minus 9. And so my pOH equals 5.94. And my pH is equal to 14 minus my pOH. And that is makes my pH equal to 5 point, whoops, I read things wrong. Sorry about this, guys. My pOH is 
8.06 and my pH is 5.94. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out so that you can see this full problem. Notice how we found what was in solution via stoichiometry, and we this is what we did in Chapter 4 last semester. And then finding the pH of the resulting solution, this is an ice table, just like what we've been doing in chapter 15 and 16. Okay, good news. That ice table that we used was, the math in it was complicated. It turns out that there is an approximation that we can make that really makes buffer calculations a lot easier. And this is what's known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This is given the name the Henderson-Hasselbalch. He, I'm trying to figure out how to spell it. B-A-L-C-H, the Henderson-Hasselbalch, otherwise abbreviated for me as the HH equation. I call it HH. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation says that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of, this is the, con the concentration of the conjugate base, over the weak concentration of the weak acid. Now, what makes the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation so nice is that the values that go into this equation here are initial concentrations. And so it makes the approximation that the equilibrium concentrations are approximately equal to so the equilibrium concentrations are approximately equal to the initial concentrations and so i is going to be the initial concentration This approximation made by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is the same approximation that we make with the small x approximation in the ice tables. You guys know when you have your Ka is equal to x squared over number minus x. And we say that we can ignore this. We are making the exact same approximation in, you, in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And it turns out that for buffers, the Henderson-Hasselbalch approximation is always good. And so this is always a valid approximation. Okay, so let's work through an example of a titration in the buffer region using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So our step one, we need to say what is in solution. And so to do that, we have to see where we are. And so we have to do the stoichiometry. And so with the stoichiometry, 
we mix together 5 times 10 to the minus 3. I can write. Let's make that neater for you guys so we can read it. 3 moles of sodium acetate with 9 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of HCl. We start off with no moles of acetic acid. And when we do the stoichiometry, the HCl is my limiting reagent. And so I have none of it left at the end. I make 9 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of acetic acid. And I have 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of acetate left. And so now what is in solution is a buffer because I have a weak acid plus its conjugate base. So now I need to find the pH of the solution. And I'm and I'm going to um and I'm going to find the pH of the solution using the Henderson Hasselbach. So pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjug oh, and I'm going to make this specific. So I have CH3CO2 minus over CH3CO2H. So the acetate over the acetic acid. The pH equals pKa. So this is minus log the Ka of acetic acid I find on the table. I find the Ka on the KAKB table, and the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, plus the log, and now these concentrations are going to be taking these moles, dividing by the total volume, which is 0 0.013 liters, And so I get my base concentration is 0 0.315 molar. My acid concentration is 0 0.692 molar. And if I solve this math, I get that the pH is equal to 5.40. And if we compare that to what we did in the previous problem, oh, the previous problem was a little bit different. Um, I, I had only put in one milliliter of HCl. Um, but if we compare it to the previous problem, the pH is lower, which it should be because we are adding strong acid. And so we would expect the pH to decrease. Okay, so in the next portion, we are going to find out what happens to the pH of the solutions of a titration whenever we add enough strong acid that we are past the equivalence point. Um, please reach out with any questions. Um, I'm here to help you, and I hope you are doing well.